This is Sam Torres from Torres Empire. You're watching The Art of Low Riding. Hobbo's Custom Suspension Works has been in the automotive customizing business for over 20 years. The owner Art has owned and built many custom cars and award-winning hoppers and has become a respected fabricator and installer in the customizing community. Hoppo's has grown into a full fabrication shop with a crew of highly skilled installers, including a full machine shop making custom suspension parts all in-house. From mild to wild, if you can think it, Hoppo's can make your custom suspension dreams come true. With a fully stocked warehouse of parts for hydraulic or air adjustable suspensions, frame modifications, wheels and tires, and even one-off billet parts, Hoppo's has you covered. So if you're looking for an innovative custom suspension company, visit Hoppo Suspension Works at their new location or online at www.hoppo'sonline.com. This is the art of low riding. A true automotive enthusiast has a passion for their dream car and strives to create their own vision of what that car should be. With each vehicle owner being the artist and their car as a canvas, creating automotive art and their dream ride. Today we're at the Los Angeles Convention Center at the second annual Torres Empire Lowrider Super Show. On this episode, we'll be talking to Johnny Salters, owner of a flawless 58 Impala, 8 cent. Johnny brought his Impala to LA all the way from South Carolina to attend one of California's biggest and hottest shows. So join me as we uncover the art of lowriding. Johnny, welcome to our show here in Los Angeles. I appreciate you coming out and showing us this beautiful work of art. Please give us a, uh, a background on what this car was like when you first got it and the journey that it took to get here. Well, I uh, picked up the car, it's been about five years now, but uh, when I picked up the car, it came out of Louisiana. First thing on the list was uh, to disassemble the car and just see how bad is it. And uh, from that point, that's when I decided, you know, this car needs a lot of work, total frame off, let's go for it. What was the, uh, the first thing that was done on the car? Uh, of course, you know, all the sheet metal work. Uh, you had to get the rust out, get it solid, uh, get it rust free and ready for paint. And the frame went on like a rotisserie, so we could do a total shaving and molding of the frame. Okay, now is the frame powder coated or painted the same color as the car? Uh, it is actually a base coat, clear coat with a uh, custom pin striping. And then, so now you have the frame done. Uh, do, you, do you start building the chassis, uh, the frame, uh, putting things together on there at that time? Uh, yes, the first steps, uh, once the uh, frame was painted, uh, we started assembly, which was custom molded A-arms, custom rear end uh, with lots of engraving. Rear end, what do you have it? Uh, it is a stock rear end, but it is shortened and uh, it is engraved. Engine and tranny, what, what do you got on that? Uh, it's a uh, Crate 350 with a turbo 350 transmission. And, uh, and the engine, I assume, and tranny are painted and chromed out the same? Uh, on this particular car, we decided not to leave anything untouched. Every nut bolt was chromed, engraved, polished. Uh, the transmission was even smoothed and painted and pinstriped. Everything is smooth. Uh, like I say, I left no seam untouched. I wanted everything to be as slick and smooth. I do my own paint work, so I wanted to really show off the work that we could do. You do this at your body shop, you have your own shop, body shop? Uh, I do, I own my own body shop slash restoration shop and uh, we, I, I did all of this work myself. Out where I'm from, there's not a lot of talented guys that can do this kind of custom building. So of course, it was all on me, I had to do it. Did you put disc brakes all the way around? Yes, it's a four wheel disc brake system with a 605 steering box. Okay, now, now you have the chassis, it's a rolling chassis, brakes, updated steering, engine and tranny are in, everything's chroma, the whole chassis is done. What do you do at that point? Well, at that point, once the frame was up and rolling, engine built, everything setting in one piece, uh, that's when it was time to move on to the body, uh, which the same way as the transmission and all, we smoothed the floors, pinstriped the floors. Uh, I painted inside of the trunk of this car. A lot of guys miss the trunk area they know they're gonna cover it up. Well, on this particular car, I didn't wanna leave anything untouched. Everything is painted inside the trunk, even down to the steering column on this car was completely disassembled, painted and chromed on the inside where you can't even see it. 
Uh, once it's painted and back on the frame, that's when we start bolting on all the sheet metal, all the trim, uh, start putting in glass. Uh, and at that time, I started planning the hydraulics because the hydraulics is a major issue of this car here. Yeah, that's an original uh, military pumps and uh, cylinders and dumps and check valves and fittings and everything. Uh, that's correct. And, and over our way, you know, low riding has always been at minimal. Out here, you know, is the heart of low riding. And, and I had to do a lot of calling on guys out this way just to try to guide me and to kind of send me in the right direction on what to purchase and what to do. Because back home, there's no one to call home. Okay, so now your, your setup is completed. Uh, it sounds like the car is fairly done. Uh, it looks like you got quite a few uh, options on the car as well. Uh, I do. That's one thing I like about 58s. You have a lot of options. Uh, the cruiser skirts are new old stock. The uh, Continental kit is new old stock. It has the Autronic Eye, Compass, power windows, power seats, power vents. Uh, this car has every option that 58 offered. On the inside, I wanted the original style interior. So of course I ordered an interior kit from Cars Incorporated, which I installed myself. And uh, from that point, I just wanted a really nice original finish. So as you can see, I two-toned the dash. I wanted everything to be just like OG would have been back in 58. Take us to the mural. There's a story behind that. What, it, what does that mean? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, that particular mural, it, it means a lot to us because I am a God-fearing man. I go to church. I try to do what's right. And in the lowrider world, we are very misunderstood. I mean, even back in South Carolina, people think we're gangbangers. They think we're no good. But it's not true, you know. I mean, uh, we are good. I wanted something to do with God. You know, I wanted a God-fearing story. It's all for the glory of God, and, and, and that's what it is. It's a cross with my two kids with Jesus in the middle. Hey, Johnny, uh, why don't you introduce us to uh, your wife and co-owner of 8 Cent? Uh, this is my wife, Georgette. Uh, Georgette backs me 100% on every bill that I do. Hey, Georgette, it's a pleasure to meet you. What, what do you think about the way the car came out and what it took to build it? Well, it took a lot. I mean, time away from the family. I mean, but, you know, they're a good... The family enjoys it. I mean, we enjoy coming to the shows, going to swap meets, finding parts, um, doing all that stuff together. Well, it's truly a family affair to build a car, right? It is. It is. It's an incredible story. I appreciate you sharing it with us. It was a blessing to, to meet you and to see your car. Thank you for bringing it out. But Johnny's car is another perfect example of today's lowrider. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I look forward to seeing you next time as we uncover the art of low riding. For over a year now, we have been submitting our shows to TV networks with no luck. They feel that low riding is not a big enough market for television. Help us show them how big the low riding community really is. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos with everyone you know. And like us on Facebook.